In today's Elder Ring video, we'll take a look at seven of the most rare weapons you can get your hands on. I'm not talking about your typical go here, defeat this boss or do this thing to get this item kind of thing. I'm talking about the most painfully rare low drop chance weapons right now in the entirety of Elden Ring. You will still want to subject yourself to the pain of getting them because some of the examples I'm going to show you are actually super strong, top tier in their respective categories and can provide some of the best bonuses. So let's begin. Coming up to number one, we have the Clean Rot Spear that you get from the Clean Rot Knights in all sorts of places, but my favorite spot is in the center of the Kaelid Swamp, since there's about three enemies that equip it and can drop it. The reason why this can be so rare to drop is because you might be thinking that having a higher item discovery will be helpful, when in reality it's probably going to reduce your chances of getting this and getting some of the other items that the Knights can spawn. On. Now once you do get it, this is actually a pretty good spear, it has the standard spear attacks with the pokes and the charge attacks, but it also comes with a pretty cool holy spike damage that you can cast with the L2 from the ground. It's actually really nice to couple this if you play a little bit more like on the turtle side with a shield and a spear, you have the range, you have the attacks, but you also have that extra holy damage on top that can actually take enemies by surprise. You can either set this as a trap when enemies are charging towards you and you want to stop them or as an extra damage tool when you hit them with the L2 initial attack and then follow up with the spears from the ground. In all of these situations it's a welcome damage definitely aimed towards hybrid kind of characters that also jump in a bit into faith so you can use strength faith builds or dexterity faith builds with this one or a mix between them. Now coming up to number two the next weapon is even more interesting as there's very few weapons of this type in the game. This is the Cerebrant Rib Rake, which you get right here from the Windmill Village on this side of the map, basically from the dancing enemies that have it equipped on them. This is again a very rare drop, which is why I recommend trying to farm this large group right here, as you don't just get this weapon, but there's a second one in the area that also drops really rarely and has a pretty cool attack. Now once you get it, it actually gives a pretty interesting effect on top of the Barbaric Roar skill that it comes with automatically and that's the fact that every single hit with it will give you runes. Now by default that's just about 10 runes but if you have two of them equipped at the same time and do a dodge followed by an L1 you can actually get 20 runes since you get it from both of the rakes at the same time. So you can dodge away, deal damage and also get the runes in the process. Obviously the earlier you get this the better it's going to be since in the later stages there's way better rune farming methods that will obviously exceed it. So you might want to get this as early as possible and just use it as an extra way of leveling up. Its damage is not going to be that great though, but again, you get it for the runes and it's not that bad in terms of range either. But moving on to number three, the next weapon is actually going to deal some pretty good damage and will throw back enemies regardless of their size. This is the Envoy Great Horn, another version of the Envoy weapons that you get from the Envoy enemy. In this case, the best source of this is going to be in the Helic Tree area, starting from the Canopy side of Grace. There's two enemies that will likely shoot towards you, so you will just want to follow my path here, going to the right side and then flanking the first enemy right here at the top of this branch. And these two, with the first starting here and the second one at the end of the branch, surrounded by a bunch of other Envoy enemies, will have the highest chances of dropping the Great Horn. Of course, you will need quite a a bit of item discovery to do so, so this is going to be quite a lengthy farm. Once you do get it, it actually comes with some pretty respectable stats. This is again another hybrid kind of weapon that requires both strength as well as faith, but it does come with some pretty awesome damage, especially on its holy L2 attack. The skill is called the Great Oracular Bubble and it basically summons a greater version of the bubbles that you can do with some of the other horns. It deals very high damage but most important it throws enemies off their feet like constantly so you can pretty much spam this if you get a chance to throw them back and get enough wind up to do that. Luckily you will have enough time to do that since you seem to get hyper armor when casting this so even some of the spells that are especially designed to interrupt you won't interrupt the spell casting on this one so it can be quite beneficial and again the damage on it is not too bad either. 
here. Moving on to number 4, the next weapon is actually one of the best hidden gems that you can find right now in Elden Ring, and this is the Bandit Curved Sword, an excellent dexterity weapon, especially for a bleed build. Now, you do find this at the Church of Pilgrimage, there's probably other places too. Right outside of the church, there's a graveyard, and inside of it, there's a skeleton enemy that wields it, so they also have a rather small chance of dropping it, of about 2%. But if you farm him enough, if you get that high item discovery as you should, you should in theory get at least one of these, but I recommend going for two. Reason being is because if you get two of them, yeah, this is a curved sword, and as you know, right after Twin Blades, these are the best at applying any stacks of status, so in this case, bleed would work the best. Both of your jump as well as your dash attacks perform four hits into one when power stancing these, which means guaranteed having at least one bleed effect on any enemy at any time. And the damage on it is also really high, it's probably better than most of the twin blades even, not really sure exactly how it stacks compared to the godskin peeler, but it's an amazing weapon to have that just destroys enemies, it's super fast and doesn't take too much investment into becoming super powerful very early on. Coming up to number 5, since we are on a roll with the strongest weapons, another hidden gem is the Beastman Cleaver. You get this from the Beastman enemies, but there's a couple of locations you can farm these in. The earliest is by going to the four belfries and then getting one of those stone keys and heading over to the last one, to the tower right here to the right side, which is going to bring you to Crumbling Azula. And there is actually a secret island over here with one of these enemies actually wielding that Beastman Cleaver cleaver so you can farm it from him. If you don't like that spot and if you want something with a few more enemies, there's a better one at the Dragon Temple Lift. Once you reach this area, there's actually two of these beastmen that you can farm even easier. The first one, right as you go down the elevator, is going to be down by the stairs. You can go ahead and kill him and then make your way back at the top and then go by this pillar that seems to be hanging in the air as at the end of it, there's going to be a second one wielding the same well type of weapon. Weapon. And by the way, since you're going to be farming this quite a bit, I also suggest making that elevator go back up once you're down so that the next time you teleport at a set of grace, it immediately goes up for you and you just have to take it down and repeat the process. Now, once you do get it, this is one of the best strength scaling weapons in the game. It also comes with some of the highest AR once you reach full 25 plus and also get it with maybe a heavy kind of affinity, but pretty much anything works. Just just to see how broken this is, I wanted to test this with a seppuku to see if this still behaves well, leaving aside the fact that you're not, well, stabbing yourself anymore, you're pretty much cutting yourself in half, this is still an extraordinary weapon to have, especially if you have an arcane build. It stacks amazingly, you still have very high damage with it, and the bleeds will still destroy enemies. Of course, there's other types of builds you can create, you're not bound to just this, also a magic magic hybrid with maybe a glintstone pebble actual work can definitely work with the follow up on R2 since you can stagger enemies super easily and follow up with critical strikes. This weapon can be built in all sorts of ways and it won't disappoint you in terms of damage. Moving on to number 6, the next one is the Iron Greatsword. Don't be fooled by the generic title or the fact that it looks basic because this is one of the best strength weapons in the game and one of the highest AR of any greatsword right now in Elden Ring. Now to get this you can go ahead back at the Helic Tree and especially near the town plaza you will have to farm one of these red main kind of like jumping enemies that are super annoying. There's a few in the area but this is the easiest and closest to a side of grace and you can also use some of these walls maybe with something like a rivers of blood since it passes through them and still deals damage. But uh, yeah repeating this process will be quite a lengthy and quite painful, but if you do manage to get this really awesome sword, it's totally worth it because the damage on it is absolutely crazy. So here's a couple of scenarios that I've done with it. In one of them, I've been using the Royal Knight's Resolve on both of these with a heavy affinity and the damage is actually pretty nutty. It's about five to 6,000 on this dragon where normally I would need a really powerful buffed spell to pull that off. And yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely doing quite a lot of damage 
damage over there and you can also stagger the enemy if you pull enough jumps a second one that i've done is with frost scaling this time around i wanted to see the frost build up on these again pretty similar setup and it's even better at burst damage since you can well do both the frostbite damage and that jumping attack with it for even higher bursts which is also quite nice and finally to number 10 the last one is the magma blade and something that i farmed for a very long time before getting it which is why i'm deeming this to be the rarest of the rarest items right now in elden ring you get this very close to the temple of Aegle. i've explained that in a different video how to get there and you probably already know by now but eventually you're gonna reach this area with some of these serpent enemies that use them so these are the ones that will drop them within the temple areas once you do get them this is basically the kratos build that we've done a while ago and in my opinion one of the coolest by far in elden ring you kind of have this really special spinning attack that also leaves lava trails around you and it's pretty great at staggering enemies and then following up with maybe some stuns but the damage in itself is also pretty high since you stack up so much fire and that magma damage on top that you're simply going to overwhelm most of the enemies if you have enough room to cast all of this it's a really awesome weapon it's charge double attack also seems really awesome since it's very similar to the scimitars or the curved swords so again you're going to just destroy enemies with it with style i might add but this is pretty much it with the video totally let me know down below which is your favorite and how many of them on the list did you get in the meantime if you enjoyed this video at any point a thumbs up on it would be appreciated and of course as always we're trying to reach 400k subs by the end of 2022 you would get to be part of an amazing community and i would also be grateful to you forever so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time